everyone. So, um, yeah, 2.9 came out. Um, I just thought I'd give a quick explanation of some of the settings I'm seeing and some of the conflicts that they're having and um, what settings rely on other settings that I'm seeing, um, issues they're having, just so you know that you're not alone if you're having these issues. But, um, but yeah, so like uh, the first one we have here is uh, DLSS. Um, this is a huge improvement. Uh, some of the downside is you do end up seeing some ghosting. I had a feeling that would happen, um, you know, the second we saw the screenshots from uh, DC or from Equal Dynamics, everybody was like, oh my God, look at the frames. You're like, yeah, but every game that's implemented DLSS and has fast moving things typically has issues with ghosting and DCS is no different. Um, so if you can suffer the ghosting, then use DLSS and you'll have great frames and that's fine. Um, I'll probably use it. Uh, still kind of debating. Uh, some of the ghosting is really bad, especially with the new uh, distance spotting like dots for the, for the planes. When they're out there really far and you see 10 miles away, there's this dot and if it's moving, you know, parallaxing in your view, then uh, you really see all that ghosting and it's not, I don't, I don't really like it. The other thing is if you're landing, uh, it's a really easy one to see actually, and it's really amplified in VR. All of the ghosting stuff, in my opinion, looks, it, it's like barely noticeable, maybe a little bit, probably depends on your resolutions. Um, but in VR, it's really bad. Um, at least to, to, to me, maybe you feel differently and that's fine. Um, but if you land a plane and as you're landing, look out to the right or left. And if you see trees, uh, the trees ghost a lot for me. Um, probably not a big deal. You don't typically do that, but just something I noticed. It, the, the planes moving, like when you're in a dogfight and you're dogfighting, I see it a lot, especially against the sky background. Um, maybe we'll get used to it. Maybe it'll get better. I don't know. I'm on a 3090. Um, so I'm using... DLSS 2.5. Maybe it's better on a 40 series. Uh, I can't really say. Let me know in the comments if you have a 40 series and you're not really seeing it. Let me know what you think anyway. I don't care. Um, the other one is uh, FSR and NIS. Now I've, I've used both of these extensively and tested all sorts of settings um, with VR and Open XR Toolkit. And I don't like either one of them. So I'm not even going to look at these. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to check them out. You know, if you guys have used them and got good results, great. I haven't really heard anybody getting great results. It seems like it's just the same as the OpenXR toolkit um, for VR. But uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm skipping these because I don't really care. This is the big one for me. Uh, the next one is SSS, and this is uh, Screen Space Shadows. And what that is, is it basically it looks at your screen and looks at, you know, like the sun and it checks every pixel on your screen and says, is this occluded? Should there be a shadow here from where the sun is? Um, it is a great effect typically for things that are close up. And then as the distance gets further away, um, sometimes it doesn't work right. And I'm kind of seeing a lot of that in um, DCS. And so I've turned it on. Uh, and then to really demonstrate everything, I'm going to turn off terrain shadows. Cause... Okay, so I just booted up a random mission real quick. Um, and you can see here there's... Uh, I don't have terrain shadows on. We've turned them off. Uh, you can see here there's shadows from the trees. So that's cool. But you'll notice that as you get closer, the shadows actually start to disappear. Um, some of that is probably from the grass rendering in. And so the shadow is moving behind the grass, uh, which is kind of... Right, except for the shadow should also cast on the grass. I don't know why it is. Maybe the grass doesn't have a depth um, in the frame buffer. I'm not sure, but it, but it, it's a little jarring. And then on top of that, as you get further away, you can see the, tr the, the shadows just grow. So the grass starts rendering in like here. As you get a little closer, you can see they disappear. The grass looks great. You can see the shadows on the grass. That's awesome. But this is kind of weird to me. And I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know why it's happening. Uh, you can see it like the edge of the screen. So if you look at like the right side of the screen, as you move, uh, there's like a, a 
a shadow popping in and out, that's kind of a side effect of screen space. Anything, you do reflections, if you do shadows, these, the anything at the very edges is gonna have an issue. But yeah, there's this kind of weird artifacting thing that's going on with the shadows here as you move in and out. Not a huge deal, but just something, if you see that, that's what that is. Now, there is one thing you can do to alleviate that. If you turn on flat shadows, um, you know, you'll take a little bit of a performance hit, but flat shadows will supplement where the screen space shadows aren't working. So you can see here, uh, the trees look great. And as we get closer, they still cover up the grass. Um, there's a little bit of pop in that happens, especially in the center tree here. You can see that pop in that occurs, um, but not as jarring as like losing the entire shadow. And then as you get further away, if the shadows are growing, they're already covered up by the um, flat shadows. So that's kind of nice. So this this is like if, if you're looking for some good looking shadows, you know, on the ground with the grass and everything else, uh, the screen space shadows definitely supplement uh, on top of the uh, flat shadows. Um, the other thing is they're, they're gonna be good. They're gonna be even better, I should say, with the default shadows too, which actually uses uh, the actual shadow rendering, the cascade um, cascade shadows, instead of the flat shadows. Flat shadows are completely different technology. We can get into that in another video. Now, the issue that I was talking about where it's not working with DLSS, uh, if I turn DLSS on, I have screen shadows on, I will even turn off terrain shadows just so it's much more visible. Um, We'll go ahead and jump into a quick mission here. Okay, so we started this mission. We're in uh, the external view. Um, and you can see here everything looks great. Uh, a couple of different issues you're gonna see though. Because everything's rendered in screen space, you actually lose the, the depth information for where shadows would be behind objects. So in this case, the F-16 that's there, the um, shadows that would be cast from the trees behind it, you're gonna lose it. You can see this effect when you um, look at reflections in DCS on water uh, and there's objects in the way, primarily like the canopy rail or something, uh, you'll lose like reflection information there. Um, so you can see here, as I move around, you see how the shadows are moving in and out. That's kind of a side effect of, of screen space shadows or screen space anything, like I said before. Um, the other problem is with DLS only, if you turn on DLSS and you have screen space shadows on, you get this problem. Where at certain angles, the shadows just go absolutely crazy. You can see here that the terrain just goes completely dark. Um, and if we leave it in a weird spot, you can see all the banding that's occurring, especially on the plane wing. Um, so some, something weird's going on there. If I turn off DLSS, I don't have this issue. So if you're having that issue and you're running DLSS and you have screen space shadows on, turn off one or the other until ED fixes the problem. Uh, and the, other, uh, the other thing I wanted to know is you can't use screen space shadows at all. Um, so if you turn it on and you turn off shadows, it doesn't work. It turns it off for you. Um, these, the terrain shadows, even though you can select default, default means it's going to use the quality of the shadows you have selected here, um, as long as it's not flat. So if I go to low, then my terrain shadows are gonna be low. If I go to medium, they're gonna be medium. If I go to flat, then it's not gonna work. You have to choose flat here. I'm pretty sure about that. But these these two are related. And then because of that, so is screen space shadows. If you choose flat or off, you can't turn this on. And if you go to high, then you can turn this back on. Um, obviously low and medium would work as well. So tinker around with your settings, see what works best. Again, if you're using DLSS until, uh, until ED fixes it, you're really not going to be able to um, use screen space shadows unless there's something wrong with my machine. Maybe there is, but um, I kind of see that. But I think that uh, in my head, what makes sense is that you're rendering something that is down sample, that is smaller resolution and you're up sampling it. So you're losing that depth information. So I think there's just a bug there um, or it's just not something that 
can really be done. I don't I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. I'm, I'm guessing there's probably just a small bug ED's got to figure out. I'm sure they will at some point. Uh, the last setting we got is this uh, LOD switch factor. This basically just changes um, at what distances the level of detail changes. So basically, if you slide it up, then things that are further out will be at a higher resolution level of detail than um, than they were prior. And if you lower it all the way down, then, you know, if you have something at like 100 meters and it was at level of detail two, which would be zero would be the highest. So zero, one, two, three, and it goes down to, let's say, seven. Seven just looks like a couple uh, blocky triangles on the screen. And zero means that it looks like the real thing. Uh, if you turn it all the way down to 0 0.01, then maybe at 10 meters, it starts changing those level of details. Whereas at one, it might have done it at 100 meters. And if you go up to two, then it maybe does it at 200 meters, you see. So that's kind of what that does. This is going to be kind of a performance benefit for people who are having issues. Turn this down a little bit. I haven't done any testing with it yet. Um, I'll probably try to get to that during the week here. Uh, I'm pretty busy, but we'll see. Uh, the other thing is sharpening. Um, this is this is a cool feature. I really like this. I actually used to use um, Reshade to do this for me. Uh, and I'm probably going to turn it off. Pretty sure I have it on right now, actually. I do have uh, uh, contrast adaptive sh uh, sharpening on. Um, but that was primarily... I actually don't see the benefit of that in the uh, VR headset. That was primarily for when I was recording. Um, just get a little bit of a sharper image for when I record. So now it's actually in the device, which is really cool. Anyway, guys, I just want to give a quick update on the things that I've seen. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, anything you would like me to explore in a little bit more detail, I do still want to put together a video on how I record VR in DCS. Uh, I was waiting until 2.9 came out to do that, so I will do that pretty soon here. Um, and hopefully get that out to you guys in the near future. So expect that. I do want to go over more in detail all of the settings stuff. Um, I put together a spreadsheet uh, when multi-threading came out to look at the benefits with different settings one by one, changed them, took like four hours. I did it on like two different machines. So I do want to use that information and provide it to you guys. I just haven't had time trying to figure out how to present it in a way that's consumable and not boring. But uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you found this uh, enlightening or entertaining and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.